Your prop hits a rock. Do you have to pull the engine and do a complete teardown? Well, let's find out in the hangar. Welcome to In the Hangar. I'm Dan Milliken. And I'm Christy Wong. Today's episode is brought to you by Gold Seal, iFly GPS, and Wingfield Aviation. So, Dan, I heard you had a prop strike. Yeah. So, what happened? All right. So, just even the topic of this episode, um, my blood pressure kind of rises a little bit. So, yes, I had a prop strike, and um, we're going to get all into that because a prop strike is a very common thing. And, and there's a lot of misinformation out there about whether you have to, you know, just a little thing and you got to pull the whole engine thing. So I'm very excited to bring in the guy who is handling Lola's engine right now, all the way from Alabama, JD Cutie from Pinnacle Aircraft Engines. JD, thanks for coming to be on the show today. No problem. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so we got to be really nice to JD. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Would so, you like a shirt? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so all right, JD, let's first talk prop strikes. What exactly, and the term is sudden stoppage. And when, when the mechanics and everybody started using that term for me when I explained what happened, sudden stoppage, I was like, no, 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 the prop never stopped. You know, so it's not sudden stoppage, but it's, it's a term that they use. Correct. Okay. Uh, the way the service bulletin is written, it says sudden stoppage and prop strike. Um, you know, they both kind of mean the same pretty much. You can have a prop strike in tall grass if it slows the prop down so, you know, so many RPM. Um, there's, and everybody kind of has their own feeling on the definition of the prop strike. You know, like you asked if you hit a rock. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the service bolt states that, you know, if you can uh, blend it out and the prop doesn't have to be removed for any damages, then that's not considered a prop strike. Um, I know of a, you know, an aircraft that a hangar door fell and it caught the edge of the prop, but it was blendable. You know, it wasn't a prop strike. The engine never had to remove the prop from the engine. So it's really hard to say that that was a prop strike. Um, even though most insurance companies would rather you do the inspection just before any kind of impact on the prop because they're more worried about a crankshaft failure in later time. You know, that's one thing that really surprised me with, with Lola. So when when I had the prop strike, sudden stoppage, um, we had to get a, a prop on there. I had to get a ferry permit, or, or I went to go get a ferry permit only to find out that the FISDO said I didn't need one, but that he would give it to me anyway. I was just surprised that the insurance, you know, just immediately went that direction. Yeah, there's both Lycoming and Continental have different ways of going about it. And every FISDO you deal with has a different way of going about it. I know of some FISDOs on Lycomings that say you have to do the AD, which means you pull the accessory housing, and really the AD just states to change the dowel in the rear of the crankshaft and the bolt. Well, then if you go a little farther into a Lycoming and you get into the service bolt, and it actually gives you a full checklist, which you have to tear the engine down to complete. Um, where Continental is a lot different. There's just a service instruction service bolt, and then it goes in and it tells you the difference between the two, um, you know, whether it needs to be removed for uh, inspection or if it can continue flying with blending the prop. Uh, so you kind of have to, you're dealing with different people at different FISDOs that have different beliefs, mm -hmm. different mechanics believe different things. Um, I know of several mechanics that they do the bare minimum and say it's good to go. Um, I've never done it that way just because I, I'm always worried about what if, you know, if we, if I went in and signed off a, an inspection just by changing the, the gear bolt and a dowel in the rear of the crankshaft and the crank is cracked and then the prop in front of the crankshaft disappears in flight, you know, that comes back on me at the end of the day. Um, so I'm a firm believer of the teardown and, you know, it may also be because I am partners in an engine shop that I believe in doing them. Um, but no uh, bias. yeah, no bias, but you know, you kind of <laughs> catch different things. Um, I've seen prop strikes that barely hit anything and the flange is cracked. I've seen prop strikes where the props are bent all the way backwards and the crankshaft perfectly fine. Um, so it's, you know, you never know you just without actually doing an inspection on it. What's the craziest thing you've seen? Whew. Well, I mean, I've seen engines come in and 
pieces. Oh, wow. I just, I just had a, a, a lie combing come into the shop that the small end of the uh, connecting rod broke and the connecting rod slung all the way around and it was pretty much in two pieces by the time we got it. A light so, coming what? <laughs> uh, that was a, a 360, oh, 360. Oh, God. Was, yes, I was <laughs> afraid you were going to say that. Those are great engines. Okay, good. Um, they really are. I'm a big light combing fan. Um, they right. they do really well. They're a lot more inexpensive to operate compared to the Continentals. Um, and what do you have, Dan? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, they both hold their own. You know, they're both great engines. Um, you know, just on the, the maintenance side aspect of it, a light combing is by far, you know, a lot less expensive compared to maintaining the, the Continentals. Um, and then even the cylinders, Continental, you know, you don't really normally get TBO on cylinders with factory cylinders from Continental. And I've seen light combing cylinders run three or four overhauls. Oh, interesting. And it's, yeah. it's pretty wild. I didn't know that. They put a lot of choke in the cylinder, so it allows a lot of meat there for it to, to wear. So I just did a top overhaul in the oh, Warrior right. this last fall. Um, cylinders were getting pretty old, and there was a little bit of cracking and um, probably would have been okay for a little bit longer, but I like to do a lot of preventative maintenance mm -hmm. on the airplane for a lot of reasons. Um, but we decided, you know what, it's probably best. Uh, it's old. Yeah, it's she's a given, Yeah, she's given us a lot of hours. So we got four of the superior okay. cylinders on there now. But everything else is fine. In fact, we just did the engine, a full engine inspection per the Lycoming uh, service bulletin. So I don't. you may or may not have seen what happened to my uh, airplane recently. Um, one of our club members, unfortunately, took the airplane, very purposefully rolled it upside down. There is a possible overspeed. It's not funny, Dan. <laughs> Am I I'm sorry. Was I laughing? <laughs> um, the video is on our channel. If you guys want to check it out, it's there. But um, we talked to our AMPs. We had four AMPs looking at this airplane from nose to tail. And then we brought in an additional AMP as well to help us with the light combing service bulletin because there is a potential that the engine was oversped. Um, we believe that the individual did loops in the airplane as well. And so, obviously, it's a fixed pitch prop, and you know where I'm going with that. Right. Um, part of that says that they have to do a full engine inspection with it, and not a teardown, just a, an inspection, boroscope it, et cetera, and uh, everything came back great. Right. So that's the good news. All right. So for um, to finish out the prop strikes, okay. um, what should somebody do? From any level of prop strike, maybe they got a little ding um, and they're freaking out about it versus all the way to, you know, you're missing chunks of metal at the end. Well, I would definitely, of course, contact an A&P um, or an engine shop, a reputable engine shop that you can send pictures to, ask questions. Um, you know, never hesitate to pick up the phone when it comes to, to questions you may have about engines. Um, I'm I mean, I answer the phone all day long at the shop and answer questions for people that aren't customers or, you know, it's as part of the business, um, you know, so they could, I'm willing to take phone calls. If anybody needs a phone call, they're more than welcome to call me. Um, there's a lot of other reputable shops in the world too that, you know, they'd be more than glad to help out with questions. Um, you know, I always, I would prefer an owner of an aircraft to, to go out and get some homework done and, you know, don't just go by one AMP's word right off the bat. Let's take some pictures, look at some different things, um, because you may have options. You know, um, if it's not, if it's blendable to one mechanic and another mechanic says it's not blendable, uh, you know, so you kind of have to look at the the whole picture and deal with several different people. I think that's my hardest uh, thing as an aircraft owner is I could take the airplane to three different shops or three different AMPs and get three completely different opinions. Absolutely. Well, let me ask you this uh, concerning Lola, my 210 Continental. Um, <laughs> <laughs> with the prop strike and, you know, I had never considered not removal and teardown inspection. When the FISDO said, oh, you don't have to do that technically, um, for a brief moment, I thought, We've got that temp prop on there. Let's just, and it's actually not the temp prop. It's the new prop that we just put on there. What if I just call it good and keep flying? I actually would have been legal to do that. Now, you having seen my engine and inspected it, how, how well do you think I would have fared? Well, there was no damage to the crankshaft. 
Which is the so big concern on a price, Which is the right? big concern. Um, but you also had high time. You're 1750, I think, right in that area, just shy of TBO. Um, you know, so when we got yours opened up, we noticed, well, you know, connecting rod bushings are worn, um, rocker arm bushings, some of them are worn, some of them had some small cracks in them. Uh, you know, there was a bunch of little things that kind of added into it. Uh, and if you would have put a prop on it and keep flying, it, you probably would have been just fine as far as, you know, the crankshaft is aware. <laughs> um, but at the same time, we found other issues that would have right. caused problems later on down the road. No, I think it's just what comes with owning an airplane. Yeah. You just, this is what happens. It's what you've got to do. Yeah. You don't want to take chances on this kind of a thing. Absolutely. And that's why I changed the cylinders. I, I was like, you know what? I could go another 100 hours, 500 hours, 1,000 hours, or I could go two hours. I might not make it back to the airport. You just right. never know. And the insurance company, so they want you to do it. You yeah, know, which because surprised they, me, but yeah. Um, well, they don't want the liability aspect of it of you not doing it, and now you have an incident where you the crash into a house or yeah. the whole plane's a loss or something like that. Um, so they look at it more as a whole lot easier to take care of it right now um, and then instead of having a big liability behind it. So the insurance companies normally work really well with everybody to yeah. to get that squared away. Okay, so Christy mentioned her top overhaul, and we're using terms. Let's now move from prop strike to overhauls. Define what an overhaul is because you see when you're looking to, if you're thinking about buying an airplane, you see SMOH, you see, you know, uh, since top over, you, you see all yeah, these terms. TBO, SMOH. TBO, yeah. What, what define all these and what they mean? So you have time since new, which is, of course, since it came out of the factory. Um, then you have uh, time since major overhaul, which is since it's been overhauled at a repair station facility, um, they can't legally zero time it. Only the factory can use zero time, which is um, kind of wild because they don't do a whole lot different than what we do. They're not replacing everything brand new. So a factory overhaul will zero time, but like Pinnacle Aircraft Engines or another shop that does this, when they overhaul it, it you can't zero time it. The total time will continue. Um, it'll be zero since major, but your total time from new will continue on. I see. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, you gotta have, is it really that big of a deal? Um, Personally, I would prefer to overhaul my own engine because I know that all my serial numbers all stay together. I know how I flew my engine. I know the yeah. history of my engine. Um, you know, when you get a factory reman, that's not all new parts. That's all reconciliation parts where they take cores, they okay. tear them down, they keep the good parts, and they reuse those to build something else. So you said factory reman. What's the difference between a factory overhaul and factory reman? Is that the same thing? Um, no and yes. <laughs> Thanks for clearing that up. <laughs> a factory reman, you're not getting your engine back. Okay. A uh, factory overhaul is they're utilizing most of your parts. I see. Whether that be just a data plate and logbook or that be the complete engine, you know, is, is all deter is determined when they tear it open. Um, where the reman, you're going to get a completely separate serial number. It won't be your, your engine okay. at all. That makes sense. And then what's the other option? I guess factory new? Factory new, yes. Yeah, factory new, um, time, uh, since major overhaul, and then top overhauls. Right, top overhaul, well, time yeah. since top. Well, what's so a top overhaul? Replacement of all the cylinders. Um, right. You know, a lot of people do it kind of midlife on the engines. Some people do it towards the end of the life, thinking that they're going to get more time out of the engine. Uh, to me, that's kind of a waste of money. Uh, because there's other parts that are wearing. It's not just the cylinders. Um, if you're getting close to TBO, would you prefer to put six cylinders on it or overhaul the engine is kind of where you want to start looking at because doing compressions only tells you the life and the health of the cylinder. You don't know what the bearings look like. You don't know crankshaft. what your crankshaft looks like, your connecting rod bushings. You, you don't have, you know, you don't know what all that's looking like. Um, so when you start getting up to TBO and, you know, within a couple hundred hours even, you kind of have to weigh your options. Um, I tell people all the time, you know, if you are going to keep it and fly it, there's kind of approach it this way. If you're going to sell the airplane, approach it this way. Um, because there's always, there's benefits of doing each thing depending on the owner and what they're trying to accomplish at the end of the day. 
Um, I tell people all the time, I would love to overhaul your engine, but if you fly 50 hours a year and you're 500 hours from there, is it really time? You know, can we put some overhauled cylinders on it instead of new cylinders to save you a little bit of money to get you to TBO? Um, you know, I'd rather see somebody reach their TBO than prematurely overhaul the engine. So if there's um, a reasonable way of doing it, then I would prefer to help them out and get them to that point. Well, let's talk about TBO for a second because yeah. Yeah. Lycoming and Continental have very different ways of doing it. How do they come up with that number? Yeah. Well, that's all done with, uh, you know, they, they tear down engines that have a certain amount of time on them. Right. And they look and TBO at, is time before overhaul, right? Yes. There you go. Okay. So they're, you know, the factory's getting in all these core engines and they tear them down. They, it runs through uh, different processes and they're doing different metallurgy testing and different testing on the parts to say that, okay, I know this part's going to last this long before it starts to have a problem. Um, and that's why, if you notice, Continental just did a 200 hour increase on a lot of their engines. And it's because they're starting to have the, you know, more data saying that if you fly 40 hours a month, these parts will be okay. Um, and the reason they want you to fly is because the, one of your biggest enemies in an aircraft engine is moisture. Uh, it starts to eat on the bearings, it eats on the crankshaft. So you have a lot of different things in play. Um, and that's why they said, well, you fly 40 hours a month, we're gonna give you an additional 200 hours because we know the parts aren't gonna wear that prematurely. Yeah. Um, now I've seen, I've done a lot of flight school engines. I've seen flight school engines with 4,000 hours on them. I've seen mm -hmm. them with, you know, 2,400 hours. And when you start getting way over, parts are wearing beyond what they should be. Um, I mean, that's why they throw TBO out there. Yes, it's a recommendation. It doesn't have to be followed. Um, but they recommend it because they know the parts are starting to wear to a point that could cause a failure. Uh, so when you start getting into that and looking at the different times, uh, I know from I've got a whole chart of from one flight school that I do work for of all their crankshafts and what they look like and when they reject. And I know the sweet spot's about 2,400 hours. Um, when we get over 2,400 hours, we've got about a you know 75% chance the crank's going to reject due to heat cracks. Uh, they start getting some heat fractures in the radius because the bearings wear. They get more heat transfer to them. Uh, so there's always, you know, they, they put that in there for a reason, even though a lot of people say, oh, you don't have to follow it. Um, it is a recommendation, but they have a, a reason why they recommend it. Okay. Let's talk about cost then. What's the difference in cost between, say, just a top overhaul and then a major overhaul? Uh, well, there's quite a bit of difference, and the price ranges vary so much depending on the engine model. I've got an 0360. So an 0360, uh, a basic 0360 overhaul is going to be right around 22,000-ish for a full overhaul, give okay. or take a little bit. Um, you know, of course, the top overhaul is just the cylinders. I'm thinking you bought them from probably Spruce or something in that area, so you probably paid about Twelve fifty a cylinder, eleven fifty a cylinder, ish. Mm -hmm. ish. Yep, right in that area. So you can kind of see the difference there. But you know, the cylinder is just a, a part of the overhaul. We still have, right. you know, um, all the bearings, rod nuts and bolts, all the stress hardware gets replaced, all the external hardware is replaced. Uh, inspection and lap and line bore, welding of the crankcase, uh, crankshaft, same thing has to go through Magnaflux, grinding, re-nitride. Uh, so there's a lot of little details when you start getting into the overhaul process compared to just, you know, a top overhaul. Uh, some people look at the overhaul process and they don't quite get all the little tiny pieces that are involved with it. You know, they, they look at the engine and they're like, well, it's just some cylinders and a crankshaft and stuff, you know. And, and at the end of the day, it's a basic engine, but there's a lot of little parts that still need to be done. Um, you know, waiting on carburetors to be overhauled sometimes. Uh, you know, and, and the price varies so different between engine to engine and the parts list does too. I mean, you can, you get into a large continental and you have two pages of a parts list on an Excel sheet when you go to order your parts because you've got all the, you know, counterweight rollers, counterweight clips and pin, you know, there's just so many little parts that also go along with the moving parts. Gotcha. So what I'm hearing is Lycoming again. Is <laughs> <laughs> the way to go. Um, all right, so, um, and I'll tell you for my big Continental six-cylinder, um, it's a TSIO 520. 
Um, I think all in it's 40 something for yeah. a major overhaul. 42. I don't remember the exact number off the top of my head. I want to say totals like 42, something yeah. like that. But, you know, when the insurance company is already paying for the removal and teardown inspection, that's about a third of the overall cost of the overhaul, which then brings me to my question. So uh, an airplane owner has a prop strike. They've got to take it in. Um, they're given the option. I mean, your company sent me two proposals. One is just the teardown inspection that um, is covered by the insurance. Right. And I could sign that. We're good to go. The end. The other one was um, a full major overhaul, mm -hmm. you know, where the uh, teardown inspection and uh, is taken out of that and what's left. Right. And it was about two thirds was what was left. Mm -hmm. But you're getting a 30 percent discount off of an overhaul, basically. Correct. If you do that. How many people, how many times do you see engines come in where the owner decides to go ahead and do the overhaul versus just do the inspection? Uh, it's probably 50 50. Um, and the reason is people have prop strikes at all different kinds of hours on the engine. That's true. Um, I've seen engines come in with actually, I had one not too long ago that had seven hours on it. Oh my goodness. With a, a prop strike? I came in for a prop strike. That's a heartbreak. Seven hours. Ouch. Um, so, you know, of course, at that point, you're not even considering to do an overhaul. There's no <laughs> point of it, you know. So I try to look, when I quote people and I'm looking at everything, I look at kind of their hours. Um, if they're getting close, I, you know, I, of course I try to sell them on the overhaul. And one is the insurance company's already paying for your removal and installation. If you fly 100 hours and so next year you say next year you have to do an overhaul and you just did a prop strike this year, now, you, now you're liable for that. Right. You know, the insurance company's covering it now. That's less out of your pocket. Um, and then, like you said, in, in your case, it pays for about a third of the overhaul price. Um, the small Lycomings, it's actually more than a third of the overhaul price. So, you know, it, if you use it, I'd say use it to your advantage, but it's probably not the best way of putting that. But, you know, if you're already there, you're getting close to TBO, um, you know, it's going to bring overall value of the aircraft is going to come up. Um, plus, you're going to get a, a really good warranty. Uh, and then at the end of the day, now you don't have to worry about the engine again for another 2,000 hours. You know, it's, it's on the back of your mind at this point. It's not one of the things you keep hoping at annual, nothing's wrong, hoping at annual, nothing's wrong because I'm, I'm at TBO. Yeah. How long does it take to overhaul an engine, say? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I know. So it depends on the way. If it came in just as an overhaul right at the beginning, knowing it's an overhaul, uh, as soon as it's torn down, the fuel system's already sent out. I mean, it, within the first two days, we get anything that needs to go out, out. Um, because sometimes we're at the mercy of our vendors. So waiting on stuff is sometimes part of the process. Um, if it goes, if it's a prop strike and then we do an inspection, it kind of adds time to it. So right now, our, our standard turn time is six to eight weeks. Um, we're probably going to be about eight to ten well, on his. It, it's going to be eight to ten on me because I took some time to decide. I first said I'm only going to do the inspection because even though I was close to TBO, I just had a top overhaul done a couple of hundred or 300 hours before. So for me, it was... You know, I hated that I spent all that money on the top overhaul, and now I'm having to uh, come in and spend money on an, an, an overhaul. Uh, I was hoping not to have to do that. Yeah, that's right. And so because of that and, and my not being able to make a decision, and now I'm deciding, okay, let's do the overhaul. Now he has to send parts out and wait on the vendors. So the clock kind of restarted at that point for how long it's going to take. So it's taken longer for me, unfortunately. Um, you know, uh, I... I guess you, what advice going and looking at the engine, do you think Dan should have just done the overhaul? I mean, was it a clear cut? Oh man, this guy needs to do the overhaul. Well, you didn't know until we opened it up. You okay. know, at, at first you said, all right, well, I just put cylinders on it. And, and but then also you were having a little bit of cylinder issue. Um, so you, you asked if we could take a look at them. Right. And then, you know, open them up. We, it looked to be like you're running a little on the rich side. There's a lot of carbon buildup, a lot of black deposit, um, causing, of course, some valves from closing all the way with carbon buildup on the seat. Um, but then we get in the, you know, we start pulling measurements of rod bushings, and we've got 
12 thousandths clearance between the piston pin and a rod, which is really far out. Uh, so when you start adding in all the little things that are wrong with it because of it being a high time engine, um, you know, it kind of just makes sense of uh, we should probably go overhaul because if not, we're going to be doing all these little parts and then still not have an overhauled engine. Uh, you know, so you can, a lot of people want to try to nickel and dime it, but at the end of the day, if you're a couple thousand bucks from an overhaul, wouldn't you rather have zero time since major and, you know, keep rocking and rolling for another 2,000 hours? Yeah, so. just for us airplane owners, it's a matter of, oh, my gosh, where do I come up with this cash? I but I, yeah, I understand. You know, and it, it's tough. Um, a lot of them are expensive, and that's why I always try to help the owners as far as if it doesn't need it, then right. let's do the inspection only. Uh, there's no point in going overhaul if if you're at 1,000 hours or 1,200 hours and you fly, you know, 20 hours a month or 50 hours a year. There's really no point of pushing that, you know, envelope to going overhaul. So you, I just try to weigh everything with the owner, what they, and, you know, what, at the end of the day, what they're looking for, what they want, um, and try to just give them a recommendation of, of the way I look at it. Um, I've talked people out of overhauls because I didn't think they needed it and I didn't want to, you know, I, mm -hmm. I don't think they're at that point to needing an overhaul. So why spend that money? Yeah, I noticed you did not uh, do that with me. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, JD, if, if uh, people want to get in touch with you and or find out more about your company, what would they do? Uh, you can visit our website, uh, PinnacleAircraftEngines.com. Uh, on there is all of our contact information. Uh, we've got a, a Facebook and Instagram. So the easiest way, of course, would be our website. There's an info tab on there. You can uh, go to info. There's also a quote tab on there for quotes. Uh, you can give us a phone call. I'm there pretty much every day and can get a hold of me. Uh, so that's really the easiest way. And prop strikes and engine overhauls, that's really, that's y'all's thing. Yes. Yeah, we do all engine overhauls and repairs, whether it's a prop strike or a cam change. Uh, you know, any kind of repairs on both Lycoming and Continentals. All right, very good. Thanks again, J.D., for coming on. We'll have to have you back on. Awesome. Thank so. you. All right, so for you guys out there, airplane owners, um, yes, an overhaul can be a very painful thing, but sometimes, you know, it's, it That's can be... That's not painful? The, <laughs> very painful. But uh, it can be the right call, too. Um, if you uh, have some overhaul experience, and uh, leave us a comment and tell us about what you've gone through. We really appreciate you watching, and make sure you share, like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and we'll see you next time. In the hangar.